Today we have the presentation of Chatham House the survey, the perception of the Russian and Western soft powers by the Belarusians. Our today's speaker is Rigor Stapenia. Uh, if you're on Zoom, if you want to select the other language than Russian, there is English simultaneous interpretation available. This time, so it's going to be interpreted from Belarusian or Russian into English. If you're listening to me, you already have found it. Uh, the format for the presentation is will be the presentation proper, like 20, 25 minutes for Rigor to go through the slide deck. And then there's going to be a Q&A session. So if you have tuned in through YouTube, feel free to write your questions into the YouTube chat. I'll read them out for Rigor. Uh, if you're in Zoom, please make sure you raise your electronic hands or write your questions in the chat box. I will read them out. Uh, well, without further ado, Rehor, you have the floor. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Press Club, for putting this uh, event together, today's event. It's always a joy to uh, talk at your premise. Uh, my name is uh, Rehor, as I have been introduced. I'm uh, the director, initiative director, uh, the Belarus initiative director, uh, Russian Eurasia program at Chatham House. This is the 12th iteration of our survey. I will present it briefly. Uh, well, I can basically talk any question uh, in the Q&A session, including Belarusian, that unfortunately I have, haven't been using much in my life. So the, the slides will be in Russian, the Q&A session will be in whatever language you prefer. Uh, interpretation is going to be provided throughout. I do hope that you can see me. Yes, I can see myself, or you can see me, uh, my slides, I mean. So as mentioned, this is the 12th iteration of our survey. And this survey uh, has been running from 15th to 30th, uh, 31st of August this year. Uh, we also made another uh, iteration that was dedicated to political issues, to the war. Uh, this uh, survey was less politicized. We wanted to make it more about culture, uh, to diminish the fear factor that tends to impact uh, the validity of surveys, we try to uh, bring in some more civilization related to culture related things into the survey. As always, I'm supposed to talk to uh, you about our methodology. Our methodology does not change uh, 12th uh, iteration rolling. We're doing it uh, in Kawi uh, computer assisted web interview as an online poll. Uh, we make the adjustments uh, for the and the, and the size of settlements, uh, educational level, and others. Uh, we have uh, done this poll in the second half of August, 741 respondents. And you should also understand that uh, since we're using online polling, uh, possibly, quite possibly, that uh, a part uh, uh, of uh, the pollable population uh, gets uh, filtered out. Although, uh, on right hand to God, honestly speaking, uh, the bulk of the population of Belarus, uh, especially urban population, they use uh, internet. So this uh, allows us to, to, to talk about them. This uh, enables us saying that our uh, survey is, re is representative. The online poll, uh, or this, this poll, this survey was not politicized. And basically uh, it reflects uh, quite fully uh, the actual opinions of the, of the people. We're also very transparent. We provide the Excel sheet files and SAV files. Well, it's uh, the same data set, uh, Excel spreadsheet and sub, uh, so that you can check out the uh, replies by all respondents uh, by yourselves and uh, reproduce our findings. So that's basically it. Uh, without further ado, Belarusians' perceptions of the West and Russia. We started by gauging the connections, by exploring the connections with other countries uh, Belarusians have, the ones that participated. Well, first of all, whether or not you have relatives abroad in foreign countries, and uh, namely 62% of uh, Belarusian urban dwellers uh, confirmed that they have relatives uh, abroad. And then we, uh, if they answered yes, so we refined uh, the geography. There was a quite a big selection of countries. Uh, so five plus uh, percent countries are put on, onto the slide here. Mostly it's Russia, Ukraine, followed by the US, Poland, Germany, Lithuania, Kazakhstan, and Latvia. Latvia being the uh, cutoff level 5%. So 62%, which is 
about 40% of Belarusian dwellers, uh, they, uh, they, they have relatives in Russia. So if we extrapolate uh, 69% out of 62%, other countries uh, are distant second, third, and so on. Uh, second biggest is Ukraine, distant second, and the third is USA. Uh, next, visa. Do you have an open visa? the European countries, EU visa, EU Schengen visa. Uh, do you have a valid visa right now? 5% of Belarusian urban dwellers do have a visa at this point. And I believe it's important to understand that uh, for years, it was mentioned that uh, Belarus is the champion in terms of uh, visas issued to Belarusian residents, Belarusian citizens uh, per capita, per capita. I believe that uh, our data shows that uh, this is no longer the case. Uh, this number of visas uh, well, is much lower than it used to be in, in, among Belarusians. We we're also talking about uh, or asking about the plans uh, to have a visa, uh, to obtain a visa, to open one. So yes, uh, there is a 17% plan to open a visa, but we need to understand that uh, intentions and actual doing, uh, that's uh, two separate things. Uh, so no, not all of the 17% will find themselves in visa offices, visa centers. Uh, next, uh, visits to foreign countries over the past five years. Uh, this is the uh, following question. So uh, five years, why is that? Typically, we, we cut this frame, uh, time frame to two or three years, uh, but we had to expand it to five because there was a COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, the borders were shut down and nobody could leave Belarus. People were quite restricted in terms of traveling. In this case, we see again that Belarusians travel to Russia, like 46% uh, admitted to having been to Russia over the past five years, 26 have gone to Ukraine, 15% uh, uh, Poland, 11 Lithuania, and 12 other countries, uh, other European Union countries. Well, again, basically, we see that. Belarusians uh, tend to go to Russia, distant second being Ukraine. Other countries are also on the list. And 37%, uh, uh, it's important, uh, none of those listed, they have not gone to uh, Lithuania, Russia, Ukraine, Poland, or other European Union countries over the past five years. So we, we see that a third of people have not traveled anywhere uh, over the past five years, more than a third, 37%. Now, if we were to compare that by political outlook, or political mood, you know, the uh, pro-protest people uh, tend to travel uh, more often uh, than the pro-government ones. You, you can see some, some data about the children and relatives. I, I'm not going to spend the time uh, talking on that. You could have uh, noticed that and analyzed this uh, for yourself. Next. This one here, yes, it's uh, living and working in the West or in Russia. We asked the question, uh, if, you had the, if you had an option, uh, where would you rather live and work, the West or Russia? And we can see that, mainly, the Belarusian society is divided pretty evenly. 37% uh, want to be in the West, 33% want to live in Russia. So. It's uh, these these figures are quite close, and 29% uh, are kind of having a hard time answering. Uh, and then we asked a refining question, like a clarifying question: uh, Why would you like to uh, go and live and or work in the, in, in the West or in Russia? It was it was an open-end question. I mean, people uh, felt uh, free to speak their mind, to write their mind. Those who who talked about West mostly brought up financial reasons, financial aspects, better quality of life, freedom, democracy. Uh, they criticized Russia. Well, largely, these were the bulk of the motivations uh, to, to opt for the West. Uh, Russia, well, reasons for opting in uh, for Russia, uh, the people brought up mentality, 24% language, 17% uh, homeland, like well, being attached to Russia, like they liking Russia, 14% uh, each, or that they had some negative uh, like attitude towards the West. It's uh, kind of like mutual mutually excluding things, uh, West or Russia, not both. Influence of Western and Russian cultures. We also gave the people an option, like there was a slider, uh, to, to what extent do you currently feel or not feel belonging uh, in the, uh, or belonging to the Western culture. And we, we saw that people 
estimate at 4.3 out of 10. So, so the scale of some 0 out of 10, 4.3 is an average. And again, we have, we have uh, compared these uh, figures or compared this percentage depending on whether or not they have visited the European Union. And we saw that uh, the people that uh, did uh, visit, did go to the European Union over the past five years, uh, they, uh, their average ranking uh, of belonging in, in, to Western culture is much higher on average is uh, significantly higher. Uh, the, next, uh, the next is true for the attitude towards the so-called uh, Western lifestyle. So 53% uh, are positive or extremely positive. Mm. However, uh, for the people that uh, visited the European Union uh, right-hand uh, bar, it's uh, 70%, so 46 plus, plus 24. Uh, people who have gone to the European Union, they tend to uh, be uh, of uh, higher opinion that they tend to be more positively uh, opinionated uh, for the Western culture, or the Western lifestyle, Western lifestyle being more specific. Next is influence of Western culture. To what extent do you agree or disagree with this statement? Western culture has a negative impact on, on life in Belarus. Uh, do you agree or not? And largely only 23%, uh, somewhat agree or agree completely, 6% agree completely. The next question is this, uh, more or less the same. Uh, are people getting better or worse because of the impact of the Western culture or that the changes are not related to, to the West whatsoever? We see that uh, well, people, 25%, believe that uh, it's uh, somewhat worsening or definitely worsening uh, the life in Belarus uh, well, because of the influence of the Western culture. Also, uh, well, quite quite a significant proportion, around 26%, uh, believe that uh, Western culture definitely improves or somewhat improves. The third uh, question is the number uh, of Western movies. Is, is that you know, too much or too, too little uh, Western cinema uh, domination in the Belarusian TV? And again, just right, 66%, only 10% uh, claim that uh, there have been too many. And those people are negatively opinionated against the Western culture. You have a negative take on it. Next slide. I'm having a hard time switching it right. Okay, influence of the Western and Russian culture. Uh, the question was, uh, in your opinion, do Western culture and the Western system of values affect or have no effect on uh, various aspects of life in Belarus, like way of thinking, the mindset, uh, legal, legal consciousness, uh, interpersonal relations, uh, knowledge and study, artistic taste, and our attitude to, to, towards work? And namely, we saw that uh, the Russian culture tends to be more influential in terms of Belarusians' uh, mindset, in terms of uh, their attitude towards each other. And the next slide down the line shows this one here. This is the nature of influence uh, of Western Russian culture. I don't think uh, I'm going to go into detail for each uh, of the findings. But uh, by and large, uh, Belarusians uh, often uh, view uh, the influence of Western culture more positively on legal consciousness, on attitudes uh, towards knowledge and artistic tastes, whether, uh, whether, uh, whereas uh, Russian culture influences uh, positively on relations between people and work, like uh, how people perceive work. Is it labor? The next question was about policy expectations uh, in relations with the West, like possible outcomes of uh, foreign policy. So uh, what would you like, uh, or what kind of policy towards the West uh, should Belarus follow? Uh, is it supposed to expand economic, political, cultural ties, uh, build rapprochement with the Western country, uh, countries, or it should cut the ties, uh, have loss, uh, less close relations and so on, and distancing from the West? So there are uh, two thirds of the people who want expansion and 13% uh, of people who want to reduce ties, less clo close relations and <laughs> distancing from Western countries. And these were exactly the same people who uh, said that there's too much uh, Western movies, uh, not too, too many Western movies uh, on Belarusian TV. The sanctions uh, is possibly one of the most important parts, uh, one of the most important aspects uh, in relations uh, with uh, Belarus and the West, between Belarus and the West. And we saw there is a certain 
demand for lifting the sanctions, uh, like 51%. But let me talk uh, in, in detail about this chunk of data. Well, definitely we see that a significant uh, there is a significant proportion of proponents of sanctions like 25 percent uh, in total imposing severe or soft sanctions uh, but they advocate sanctions so the, 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 the sanctions are quite high or quite severe as they are th these days however at the same time there's quite a, a big number of pro-democrats of people who uh, are uh, opponents of lukashenko's regime uh, they they still want uh, or they still uh, believe that the sanctions are inefficient they need to be lifted the sanctions are not going to change uh, the mode of power of the regime in Belarus. The next slide is uh, pretty sophisticated and interesting the way I see it. Uh, we've given the people a list of various uh, areas of various uh, domains like education, financial services, industry, tourism, agriculture, new tech, uh, healthcare, and so on and so forth. You can see that in, on the left uh, part of the slide. And we ask them to assess uh, these uh, items, these domains, these areas in five countries, Germany, US, Poland, Russia, and Belarus, Belarus being the far right. And we believe, we saw that uh, the, the, the most uh, adverse uh, rankings uh, uh, were for Belarus. Then Belarusians also believe that uh, there are developed countries like, uh, and the, the Poland and, and Russia are kind of like in, in between. Uh, Germany and U US being the most developed countries, Poland and Russia between uh, most developed and less de least developed Belarus as, as perceived by Belarusians. Well, ultimately, uh, Belarus uh, scores especially low in freedom of speech, space exploration and, and entertainment industry. Uh, the most positive scores are for agriculture and product uh, produce quality. Well, the foodstuffs are pretty high quality in Belarus. Next part, uh, we wanted to uh, consider these rankings uh, as provided by the respondents, uh, correlating them to the media preference, uh, state media or non-state, or non-government owned uh, media, non-government control. The people who view uh, state media, they believe that Russia is uh, a developed country, kind of like uh, on, on a par with Germany or, or the US, even better sometimes. They have this uh, peculiar uh, picture of the world. And there is a very uh, particular enemy, very special enemy, very, very specific enemy, I mean, as a Polish uh, state. The anti-Polish propaganda definitely impacts the people uh, who view the state uh, media outlets, uh, the audience of the state media outlets, and they believe uh, uh, Russia and Belarus be more developed than Poland. Uh, Right-hand side, non-state or non-governmental media audience. I believe that uh, it's pretty much uh, true for most of us here. And we see that uh, the people who view or who watch uh, non-government on TV channels or any, any media outlets, their audience, it's Zirkola WY, Belsat, Nasha Niva, Radio Svoboda, this four out of five outlets. They believe that uh, Belarus is the least developed uh, they also believe Russia to be lagging behind the development significantly. Uh, higher rankings went to Poland and Germany and US uh, were the highest ranked. Next up is the most uh, sophisticated and also the closing slide of this presentation. We did the correlation analysis, or correspondence analysis. Uh, this is a very sophisticated algebra piece of work you know, involving heavy duty algebra, but uh, the uh, outcomes were quite interesting, uh, the findings were quite interesting. We gave a fairly large range of attributes uh, that uh, the respondents uh, could put next to countries, like a country with great history, a country that is famous for its famous in music, uh, movies and music industry, high quality education, and so on and so forth. And people attributed uh, these aspects or the people correlated or matched these attributes uh, with the countries. Uh, the things you see on the right hand side shows that uh, these attributes uh, these attributes are not just uh, the ones most frequently selected with respect to any particular country out there but uh, also there is a relatively higher uh, rate of selection or a relatively higher proportion of selection and there are four clusters of four clusters among these countries well first of all is russia and ukraine 
uh, the countries that are believed to be close, culturally related, cultural affinity, right hand side. And there is this narrative of uh, three sisters or three brotherly nations, three sisterly nations. So no matter how you spin it, uh, nonetheless, it's still quite alive. Also, there were culturally close countries like Poland, Lithuania, and Belarus itself, uh, countries that are favorable for tourism or attractive for tourism, countries rich in, rich in landmarks, uh, heritage, uh, and culturally developed, interesting, like Germany and China, uh, left hand side down, uh, down and the uh, uh, great uh, history, strong army, strong political influence on other countries is the US. It's kind of separated from, from all the rest. Now I will show the conclusions. Uh, basically, I've talked uh, through them as we went through the slide deck. Russia is perceived as the country with the highest political impact, or highest uh, political influence on Belarus. Uh, it's cultural proximity uh, or affinity. If uh, people uh, uh, could uh, uh, so, uh, could choose uh, uh, between Russia and the West, they would have gone for Russia because of uh, the shared mindset of close language, or language, uh, language uh, links. Also, Belarusians uh, tend to travel more uh, they, they, to Russia. We see the impact of uh, government on the non-government old media outlets. Basically, there's nothing. This is it's, it's no rock in science. There's no no unusual findings. Uh, these are the people that uh, are proponents of Lukashenko, and they also think highly of Russia. We see that uh, Belarusians, uh, uh, Lukashenko supporters, sympathize with Russia more often than others. Belarusians have a, a positive view of Western cultures. Half of them positively assess the Western lifestyle. And the majority don't believe in uh, that the Western culture has a negative influence. Uh, Western countries and uh, high standards of living, democratic values. And Belarusians tend to think that this is the case, especially those who visited the European Union. Those who would like to move to the West are motivated by better economic, political conditions. Uh, Western countries are more, more often associated with developed technology and culture. Uh, Belarusians uh, more often positively assess the influence of the West and Russia on legal consciousness, taste, and uh, attitudes towards learning, education. Uh, travel and having relatives in the West uh, has a positive effect on attitudes to, towards these countries, this, this block of this uh, Western civilization. West uh, people who have relatives and have visited Ukraine and the European Union uh, at least once are more likely to treat this, uh, to, to rank these countries positively. Consuming non-state media is also a factor in positive attitude on the West. Uh, opponents of the Lukashenko regime uh, are most, most uh, uh, positive towards Western countries. So this will be it for the survey findings, uh, the q and session. Uh, well, I'd like to remind that uh, anyone who is watching us, be that YouTube, be that uh, Zoom, uh, please feel free to bring in your questions. This, Pavel will uh, activate your mic. Yes, thank you. I have a question about visitation of countries. There's Russia, 51% went to Russia over the past five years. And then there's Poland, Lithuania, uh, European Union. So can we put together the you know, Poland, Ukraine and the European Union and so they, they, they will outweigh or they will near Russia? Yeah, let me let me bring back the slides, bring, bring, bring the slides back on. Essentially, that same person could have gone to all three of all four countries uh, that were like um, the, the ones you mentioned, Russia, Poland, Lithuania, Ukraine, uh, China, the US, uh, could, they, they, they could have traveled all these countries. And of course, they would have, they would have uh, answered that they've been there. Uh, anyway, Russia will still be dominating in terms of visits compared to other countries. Okay, Poland, Ukraine, and uh, other EU countries. Can you put these together and compare that to Russia? Well, by and large, uh, that's true. I mean, we, we can uh, pick apart the data set that we're going to publish anyway, that, like we usually do. It's uh, possibly that 20% would be it. Some insignificantly higher proportion. I mean, uh, it's uh, much more likely to have a person who, say, went to Germany, and that person may have may have been to Poland, may have traveled through Poland to Germany. Uh, if a person visited two countries of the European Union, then most likely that person also went to some other countries. Uh, 
in the European Union. Thank you, Rehor. Uh, there's another question from the chat box. Uh, the first question. In the last survey, the number of people uh, using the internet uh, was reported as 75 to 82 percent. In this survey, uh, you claim that uh, this uh, share has uh, went uh, has gone up to 85 percent. How come? Well, essentially, this is the update uh, statistics. Updated statistics. Uh, we maintain these stats. Uh, basically, we can. Uh, this survey has been published 30 minutes ago, like uh, at the time when we started our broadcast. Uh, BelarusPolls.org. This is the website to go. You can go there, you can download the files, pick them apart, or follow the direct link that I've put in the slide. And there, are, uh, there is an actual link of, of people uh, that uh, use uh, internet in Belarus. For example, we have this uh, link in the, in the chat box right now. So uh, there's a question from Katerina Shah. Uh, please tell us uh, how come Russian culture is referred to as Russian and not Russian, right? Russian and not, not Russian. Uh, what's, what's the difference? Well, anyway, we use them as synonyms. Uh, so there's, there's two words, uh, like Russian meaning ethnic Russians and Rasiska uh, meaning Russian, uh, like broader, uh, encompassing the broader circles of Russian population. So if you call the people Ruskia, the Russians, uh, well, they don't really treat it positively uh, because uh, they, they might correct you that we're not Ruski, we're Rasiani. I, I also dislike them using the word Belarusia is like Belarusia. I, I would like them to use Belarus, but I get it uh, where it's coming from. So uh, Rasiski and Ruski is, is not the same. Right. So also uh, Russian culture, uh, like uh, uh, Rasiska culture is uh, related to the regime, to the, to the politics, uh, but uh, Russian is basically, uh, well, narrower. Uh, Russian as in Ruskaya. So a question from the YouTube. Is there a correlation between YouTube and the Outlook, uh, the, uh, the, the correlation? Yes, there is such correlation. Essentially, uh, there are some patterns of uh, media consumption uh, related to it. People who tend to have higher education, uh, they gravitate towards uh, opting in for the West. I mean, they, they want to live in the West more than uh, in, in Russia. So getting back to this question, where would you like to live in the West or in Russia? Well, where would you like uh, Belarus to end up? Uh, like the European Union, Russia or by itself? Uh, it's a geopolitical question. It's just uh, interpreted to the human level. It's, uh, it's uh, scaled down to the, to the human, to the personal level. And the people who want to live in the West, uh, they're more, they tend to be more educated. They tend to be uh, residing in big cities. They tend to be younger. Or more specifically, there are fewer people of senior generation among them. So basically, this uh, social democracy or so social democratic trends are obviously are clearly visible. Okay, thank you. Another question. Uh, according to your opinion, how come the majority of Belarusians want san the sanctions lifted? Well, basically, we can divide Belarusians uh, into several groups uh, by their political outlook and. and political views and then assess them separately. There is a certain group of proponents of the regime. For them, it's obvious that the sanctions are bad because uh, what the, the, well, they believe that uh, Lukashenko did win the elections. Everything is moving nicely. He won a fair square and the sanctions are not just. They should be lifted anyway. Now, an another portion of people believe that the sanctions yield zero result. They, they just uh, they just worsen the life of Belarusians uh, and without much impact on the political regime. And this was uh, very clearly visible after the beginning of the war, uh, when the uh, sanction pressure increased. And the people are asking if these questions or if these sanctions are against Lukashenko, well, Lukashenko still feels all right, but the, but the common people suffer because of the outcomes, because of the results of these sanctions. And the, they doubt the efficacy of these sanctions. And uh, quite a bit of uh, people uh, who are not pro Lukashenko, they still want san uh, san sanctions lifted, e either partially or completely. And there is also a quarter of the population that definitely advocates sanctions, that believe that the sanctions must be there and they have a serious impact on the regime, serious pressure exerted 
And without such pressure, no political changes or no changes in the political regime are possible in Belarus. Thank you. Right, I will ask, I will switch uh, to the questions that have been asked before as uh, presentation started. Here's one. Proceeding from the outcomes of uh, from findings of the survey, uh, can you imagine how many Belarusians uh, plan to come back to Belarus and how many have stayed uh, in the uh, in, abroad for good? Well, essentially, we cannot give this, uh, give, you cannot give an answer to this question because we simply like the data. And we also, when we ask about some future uh, actions, uh, well, it, intentions tend to outweigh or tend to be inflated. Uh, the intentions uh, might, might not always be justified. So I, ergo, like 100 of people uh, who intend to will not be 100 of doers. Uh, well, people uh, might uh, re reconsider their intentions uh, because uh, it, it just doesn't work out or they, they believe it won't work out and so on. So I believe uh, this this would be the answer. Uh, just a request to someone. Can you please uh, uh, bring the link uh, to so that people can find the slides both in English and in Russian? BelarusPolls.org. Yes, exactly. There was there was the question like that. Like where where can can we find the slides uh, in uh, this is the site uh, belaruspolls.org I've put them into the uh, Zoom uh, YouTube chat coming up uh, we're going to post it uh, shortly uh, another question came in let me yeah that, it's it's a long one it's a long one uh, just a caveat. Uh, based on survey figures, uh, the influence of information sources on the opinion of respondents is fairly high. 15 to 20 percent of the population receives the information only from the TV set. Namely, or accordingly, 10 to 15 percent can be added to the figures of Lukashenko supporters and to the pro-Russian group. Uh, you also say that uh, Lukashenko's and Russia's supporters are less active, and th this is uh, another several percent of skew. It turns out that the real figure, the actual figures on many items uh, must be adjusted by 10 to 20 percent uh, uh, in favor of Lukashenko or Russia. That's quite a serious adjustment, 10 to 20 percent. Can you comment on that? Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you for the questions. Well, essentially, a part of the people that only obtain the information from the TV, these are the people who are least active. Or who are less active. This, uh, th these things come hand in hand. If you live without the internet, if you live offline, uh, then you're not really active in uh, contemporary life. Well, there could be several percentage points uh, that uh, kind of downshift or uh, they, well, we're not talking about them because we, we need to show something representative for urban dwellers. Like if there is a city, we show what's going on in the city. Uh, you can you can throw in a couple of uh, percentage points on top of the figures that we found, but uh, well, it's a very small adjustment. I would not recommend you doing that. Uh, another another question: Do you see? I mean, uh, do you see in the findings? Because this this is the twelfth iteration of of your surveys. Do you see that Russian influence on Belarusians has recently increased against the backdrop of by Belarus uh, uh, the isolation? I believe the isolation of Belarus by the West. Or, yes, yes. Well, actually, I don't really see that. I don't really observe it. Because, well, this impact has always been quite large and it was it has been quite stable. I mean, if you uh, consider it long term, 10 or five, uh, 10 or uh, five or 10 years, it's uh, diminishing. However, it used to be dominating. It uh, this used to be there used to be this TV set or state media, state TV channels uh, talking about how life works in a very special picture of the world. And again, uh, what 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 do you think by Russian influence? Maxim Kath, the Russian blogger, is, is it pro-Russian? Well, uh, he was kind of like a historian of the Russian Revolution. Uh, well, uh, Yuri Drakakhrust Draka made these parallels, made these comparisons. I need to attribute uh, these statements to him, although I do completely share. Well, is uh, Maxim Katz a uh, Russian influence or Ilya Vodlamov, the two famous bloggers? Are they the influencers? Well, yes, but they don't really push the government agenda. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Rihor. Let me check out the YouTube chat. Uh, oh, no, there's none. There's another question that uh, was sent previously. 
what is the percentage of uh, the survey participants uh, went to uh, foreign countries at least once? Well, we asked about the five years time frame of uh, why, why would we want to ask them about the entire lifetime? Maybe they went somewhere as a kid, but they're adults now, so it, there's no meaning. It's just uh, no, no, no uh, useful information from that out of that. So uh, we need to talk about people who have never gone anywhere. We have uh, a fairly high percentage of urban dwellers that have not gone anywhere uh, to any foreign countries. And these people tend to travel uh, the least. This is a fairly high proportion. Uh, it's, it's not comparable to Russians. In, in Russia, uh, very few people do travel abroad. But in Belarus, it's about one third who have never gone anywhere over the past five years. And more, most likely, they haven't been much uh, more active uh, in the five, five years before that. Yes, thank you, Rehor. Uh, colleagues, any further questions? Uh, we still have about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, there comes another question. Right, according to the survey findings, uh, the number of uh, visas issued to Belarusians has gone down. According to the findings of the survey, the number of visas issued to Belarusians uh, decreased for a certain period. Uh, why do you think so? Is it possible uh, to predict how this indicator will be in the future, especially uh, given the rumors about possible mobilization in Belarus? Well, I believe that uh, I wouldn't. Uh, I don't have the data for the visas issued. I wouldn't like to, to comment on that too much. We don't maintain statistics uh, uh, for visas. Uh, basically, if we do the math, uh, if we yank out the calculator and do the math, well, it was quite often mentioned uh, that Belarusians obtain half a million visas per year in the entire country of Belarus, or even more than that. So that 5% that we found uh, that's five and a half people, five and a half million urban dwellers, 5% of that, well, 275,000. So essentially 275,000 of people claim to have a, a valid visa. So most likely the number of issued visas is, uh, has gone down, has gone down. But I do believe that it's, uh, well, we need to go to Eurostat or the Eurostat will publish their data. They will uh, show how many visas are issued to Belarusian nationals. The next question is from Olga Semashka. Uh, greetings. Uh, uh, have such surveys been conducted in other post-Soviet countries? Are Belarusians special in the sense of perception of Russia? And if yes uh, or if no, then why? Are, are Belarusians special in terms of perception to Russia of Russia? Well, uh, it's difficult to talk about other countries, but let's let's talk about Ukraine. Say uh, the surveys of Ukraine uh, since 2021. You can pull up uh, the, the surveys. The one is from 2021, another one from 2013. In 2021 before the full-on war, before the full-scale war, there was still quite a lot of people that were uh, gravitating towards Russia. Or they, they were favorable or favorable opinion uh, about Russia. Well, there is a, a special, uh, there, is, there is a specialist in Ukraine who had uh, an interview, like a uh, love of Ukrainians towards uh, Russians. Well, that's quite a big effort mm. even after Donbass uh, quite a lot of Ukrainians uh, were of positive opinion about Russia so I will not uh, go down uh, into this topic any further there, there were some pre-war you know, quite a number of pre-war service done in Ukraine but Moldova say uh, there would also be uh, well, there's, there's still like pro-presidential -pro rulers of the country other post-soviet countries there's also quite a lot of uh, pro-Russian politicians uh, in power. So they must have been elected somehow. Uh, there must have been some moves in the population that got them elected. Maybe they were referring to or they were actively cooperating with Russia. And uh, this, this, is, this is what got them elected. Well, pro-Western people, well, Belarusians are European uh, people. I, I don't... Uh, uh, the, the question is whether they are uh, gra they gravitate they gravitate towards the Western culture or towards Russian. It's not not really the case. Well, European Union uh, positive attitude towards uh, the, the mindset uh, are, they, are you pro-Western or are you pro-Russian uh, by by way of mindset. 
So there is a serious difference that shows uh, the Belarusians are definitely a European nation, in, in, in a certain extent, a pro-European pro Union nation. Colleagues, is there, is there other? Yeah, there's another question in the chat, uh, Zoom chat. Uh, do you plan to conduct uh, a survey on the current attitude uh, to, of uh, Belarusians uh, to the war in Ukraine? I believe we're going to uh, make it happen in the nearest future. Uh, we had something in early August, uh, we will now uh, repeat it because uh, due to the mobilization in Russia or possible mobilization in Belarus, uh, the people's attitude towards the war have changed and may have changed. More people claim to not support Russia than they used to, so this is what we see uh, from the post-war findings, so the, the lesson support for Russia. Uh, thank you. Any further questions, dear colleagues, live or otherwise? English? Any language of your preference? So, questions. I've just typed uh, a request for questions on YouTube. Unless there are questions coming up, uh, we might call it a session. By the look of it, by the look of it, uh, there's no further questions coming in. Uh, I believe uh, we should call it a session at this point. Uh, Rehor, uh, can you please uh, uh, remind uh, uh, the source for these slides? I've even given a full, uh, like, uh, belaruspolls.org. There's an English version as well, 12th iteration, 12th wave uh, of surveys. You can just uh, go there. You're going to have slides in English or in Russian. Also, please feel free to subscribe uh, to uh, the mailing list, uh, Chatham House, Belarus Chatham House, and you will receive directly uh, the polls or the survey findings as we publish them. And also, please subscribe to Press Club. Yes, thank you. Uh, please uh, stay tuned because we are running uh, our presentations with Press Club. Yes, so Belarus in Focus, please feel free to subscribe to that mailing list. It's also quite decent. There's another question that came up. Uh, from your opinion, or the way you see, uh, can the almost equal positive attitude of Belarusians uh, to Russian and Western culture be interpreted as a result of Belarusian uh, tolerance, of Bel Belarusian uh, tolerant people? Well, I believe that uh, Belarusians tend to be uh, positively uh, opinionated towards various countries. They tend to have positive opinion for, for various countries because Belarus uh, is kind of like the, the nation in between. It, it, it is located on the crossroads be between uh, various nations. And Belarusians uh, do not f believe it reasonable or do not find it reasonable to be too skeptical against any other nation. This has changed uh, to a certain extent over the past year because of the war. The part of the people have become clearly skeptical uh, clearly skeptical against Russia. Uh, part of the people have uh, gotten more skeptical towards the West. However, this is not the majority. We're not talking about majority in either case. Uh, the, the bulk of the Belarusian population, the majority of the Belarusian population, is, uh, has positive attitude towards both the, the West and uh, uh, the East, Russia. Uh, do you have uh, the slide deck in Belarusian? Unfortunately, it's uh, Russian and Belarusian only. Okay, thank you. Colleagues, uh, we receive news that uh, there is a... Uh, Alias Bilyavsky has been uh, awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, we wish uh, to uh, congratulate him on this occasion and we wish to express our, our uh, strive or we want all Belarusian uh, political prisoners uh, to be uh, freed. Uh, so uh, the fact that uh, the fact that uh, Mr. Belowski was awarded, uh, well, I understand that it's a bit. Uh, Alias Belowski has uh, has been awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, do, do, do you think it will impact uh, the uh, image or influence of the West among Belarusians? Well, yes. First of all, it's great news. Definitely, it's. Uh, this uh, goes on behalf of all the Belarusians that uh, Alice Belaski, our compatriots, uh, got this got this award. 
This is the first uh, Nobel Prize. Uh, that's uh, the, not really the, the Western civilization that awarded it. It's, it's a global prize. But the fact that uh, Belarusians uh, seem to have well, Belarusians are more on the Western radar, and the West tends to care more about what's what's going on to in Belarus, to Belarusians, what's happening to them. Well, it's some some kind of recognition. People want people people uh, crave for recognition. People need recognition. Well, taking a, a, a sidestep from this, or well, stepping aside from this uh, fact that the Nobel Prize was awarded to Alias Belatsky. Uh, so there, there are some certain certain segment, segments uh, like uh, Belarusians believe that the West uh, treats them as second-hand citizens or like second-grade citizens. Well, these items or these uh, news items like uh, Nobel Peace Prize uh, being awarded to Belarusian uh, shows that we are equal. Uh, we are not second-grade or second-hand uh, second-grade uh, citizens. Uh, this uh, this is a clear demonstration to the Belarusians uh, from the world. Okay, thank you. We'll need to sort out what's uh, been uh, going on before the before we went live. Please uh, go to belaruspost.org, Belarus in Focus, Press Club. Uh, vi do visit our websites. Uh, thank you for being. Thank you for tuning in. Tuning in to us today.